<laughs> All right, we're live. Cool. Hello, hello. Isn't this exciting? So, hello, we're live. Um, this is Spa Business Tip Tuesday, and it's 3 p.m. Eastern. And wow, this is a special treat for today because um, we have Brooke Lee Woods on, on our live stream today, and normally I do this solo, so I'm like, I don't even know what to say. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. So I'm Maxine Drake. I am a coach and consultant for spa professionals, and I'm the founder of the Esthetician Business Academy, and Brooke Lee Woods. Hey, Kim. Hi, I'm Brooke Lee Wood. I'm part of the Esthetician Marketing Club as well. I'm one of the admins with Maxine. And you're like the website extraordinaire. And I design websites for estheticians and do branding, logos, marketing materials, all that good stuff. Yeah, she's like amazing. So we have an exciting topic today. Um, before we dive in, I would really like to welcome our new members. It's been crazy. I don't know who's spreading the word out there, but like literally we added what, 160 people yesterday, bro? So we added 160 people yesterday morning, and by that evening, we already had 58 requests. So yeah. it's been a little morning, but it's been it's awesome. Been like, it has been. So we really want to welcome the new members. We really encourage to be interactive with the group. And this is a business and marketing group. So we'd like to stay specific to business and marketing because there's tons of other groups out there that offer product knowledge and, you know, discussing products and things like that. So we're excited to have you. And so um, today's topic, the two most important or the two must have business strategies for your website for exclusively for a spa business. And so we wanted to kind of dive in and, and talk about that today because um, what Brooke and I do is we kind of see what questions that you have. And we might be running a poll here rather quickly. And you know, we should do a sound check. Um, oh, there. I mean, can you guys hear us really quick? I can see the, the comments. Hello, Kim. Welcome. And, um, but if you can hear us, if you could just let us know if someone can comment. I think that's a yes. <laughs> it's a ye by okay. Pamela. <laughs> <laughs> it's a yee. <laughs> Excellent. Perfect. Okay. So great. You can hear us. Um, I just lost my train of thought. Um, we like we were going to run, um, we were thinking about running a poll um, to get questions yeah. or see what they want to know. Yeah. So we'd like to kind of monitor what's going on in the group and see what, what you need, you know, like what topics we should cover and things like that, or just where you're having struggles and, you know, how we could best serve you, you know, our whole goal and our whole mission is to bring you a ton of value in this group and, um, you know, and support one another in a really loving and positive way. And so um, with that, let's dive into, you know, our topic. Um, Brooke and I, you know, Brooke, we were talking yesterday about traditionally in, in marketing or in the marketing world. And if you want to take notes, I, I totally recommend it because there's there's four um, pages on your on your website that are, are are the most important in the marketing world. And um, the first one is your homepage. The second one is your about page, which we're going to cover. The third one is your contact page, and the last one is your blog. Okay, now stay with me because. It's, it's, there's a caveat to this because it's not necessarily true in the spa world. And here's why. Um, most estheticians and most spa owners are not blogging right now. So the more that you blog, yes, I'm going to encourage you to blog. <laughs> um, the more that those numbers are going to go up. And then, but the other page that we found that was very interesting um, for spa professionals and in the spa world was the FAQ page. Mm -hmm. So for today, Brooke and I would like to go over the two pages, which are the about page for estheticians and the FAQ page. Sound like a good idea, Brooke? Just like Perfect. Right yesterday. 
Yep. Oh, and I have to say, oh my gosh. And so, hello, I have to say happy birthday to Brooke just live because Aww, I'm so like honored to like, I just love our friendship. I love what we're working on. We just, we're, we're like on the same page. It's just really cool. So yes. I just adore, yeah, I adore you. Um, so I hope you're having a really great birthday. I so, and, okay, cool. <laughs> so do you want to start with, um, you know, and here's a good thing too, for, for those that are listening and I don't really know how many are on, it's, it's a little bit different in the be live, but if you have any questions about website or these specific pages right now, just go ahead and type them into the comments and we're going to try to get to the questions. Okay. So Brooke, do you want to start with the FAQ page? Cause what you said to me yesterday was really interesting, just in an observation of, you know, and you can find out what is your most visited page by doing a search, you know, on your own website. And you're able to do that in Squarespace, right, Brooke? Yeah, so a lot of my clients um, have, well, almost all of them actually use Squarespace for their platform. And Squarespace makes it really easy. They have a very basic analytics section. And so you can actually go in and see what pages people are viewing the most. Um, one of my first clients, Sugar Me Wax, they started out as a small one room kind of studio inside of a plastic surgeon's office. And then now they have three locations, like fully booked locations, and they're working on building their fourth. And so I was able to see kind of the trends on their website. And we actually found that the FAQs page Oh, Sugar Me Wax, they specialize in waxing, obviously. And I would say probably 90% of their appointments were Brazilian waxes. So that's um, wow. that's important knowledge just for the, the next thing I'm about to say, which is their FAQs was the second most visited page next to their homepage. So basically, it tells you that... Um, you know, after people went to the homepage, they were going to the FAQs page, which we actually named the first timers page. And so on that page, um, we wrote really detailed copy on what's happening before, what they should do before their wax, during their wax, after their wax, things that they can do to make it less painful. We talked about consistency. You know, the more consistent you are with waxing, the less it's gonna hurt, the thinner your hair grows in, all of that good stuff. And so people were spending a lot of time on that page. And mm -hmm. um, I actually had a call with Liz Steven on Tuesday, last Tuesday or Thursday. And she said, she mentioned that when she would have clients come in, she would use them as inspiration for content on her website. So if she had it and she started out just doing waxing as well. So if she had a client come in and say, you know, I'm, I was a little scared to come in to get waxed because I got burned last time. And so then she would use that and be like, okay, what can I put on my website to kind of, uh, to kind of let people know or not be afraid that they're going to be get burned when they come in to see me and what precautions do we take and what procedures do we follow and all of that good stuff. And so use your clients as inspiration for content on your website. And I found that the, the articles that I write that get the most traffic or that do the best are the articles that I write because I've been asked the question so many times, you know? So if I'm always getting asked about SEO or something and I write an article about that, then that's the article that does the best because it's wanting, because people want to know about that the most. So. Right. And there's a hint there for you too, because your clients are asking you questions all day long in the treatment room. So people mm -hmm. have a notebook in your pocket or something, because that, that is, an opportunity for a blog post. So one of the biggest questions I get, well, Maxine, I don't know what to write about, you know, and right there, there you go. So big hint. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty interesting about the FAQ too, because when a person's coming to your website, you want to make it, I, I'm sure you would agree with me, Brooke, um, you know, the user experience. So the more questions you can answer, Mm -hmm. or, you know, or satisfy for that particular client that's visiting or potential client that's visiting, maybe it's the prospect, um, you know, the better. Yeah. Um, I think it's 
definitely, you know, the FAQ, just knowing in advance now that you shared with me that it's mostly Brazilian. Yeah, people have a lot of questions about Brazilians, but, um, you know, I think it's applicable to a lot of the other things. Oh, it's applicable are- to every treatment, like facials, uh, chemical peels, because there are different types mm-hmm. of facials. You know, do you want a pamper mm-hmm. one? Do you want some that's going to get you results? And like mm-hmm. the best facial for acne, like there's so many different, there's so many different questions that can be answered on a website. And the more content that you have on the website, the more that, um, you know, the more time people spend on your, your website and the higher ra- your rankings will be in the Google search. So it's just a win-win all around. So in that scenario, would you recommend ha- having an FAQ page for every like service? Um, so I think there's a balance. I think that I, you don't want your menu to be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, you want it to be simple and straightforward. However, I think that you can add pages to um, to drop downs or stuff like that. Right. You know, if you have like a a section that's you know for skin, you can have a drop down that says skin services. You can ever have have another drop down that says um, the best skin services for acne, the best skin services for Uh, anti-aging. And you can, you can add pages like that as well. Um, So I think for your FAQs, it should be pretty, you know, pretty, it can get in depth, but not too in depth and use the other, um, maybe like, how to prevent a burn during your wax, or I guess how how we prevent burns, because that's on you, the esthetician. Um, maybe use that as a blog post, you know. So so maybe divide it like, okay, what's what's like a question that everyone asks, and what's maybe a question that a couple people will ask, um, right. and you can use those for blog posts if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense, and I think that. You know, to to keep it simple for the FAQ, you know, take a look at your most, um, you know, everyone has like a a target market and what are your services are you doing the most? Yeah. So sorry. Hold on. I want to. So Danica asked a question. Um, I thought it was a good question. She said, Brooke, my menu is pretty short and concise. Um, I could make a page that's not in my menu, but is linked within the waxing page or whatever. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes perfect sense. So basically it would be an unlinked page, but, um, but within the service page, it could, it could be like, you know, whatever keyword could link to a different page and then that page could talk about whatever. And yeah, that's a good way to organize it as well. I, I agree with that. Um, it just depends on how much traffic you want to that page. If it's in the menu, it's going to get more traffic. But if it's just like a short little answer to a question within the services page, then I think that's a good solution. Um, and it's hard because I'm all about like simple, like short and concise things. But the more I've been in the marketing world, um, I guess... I've realized how important actual content is. And so there's always the balance. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, Angel had a question too. She asked, um, what do you think of having a Facebook business page? Hands down, yes. Yes. I I guess it's like, yes. So if it's, if you're asking that to, you know, can I have a Facebook business page instead of a website? The answer is no. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then Rebecca, yes, so, this is going to be, there is going to be a replay after this. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. So, yeah, that's really important. Uh, that Thank you for that question, Angel, because a lot of estheticians actually believe that. And they think that, you know, it's going to go into like, oh, can I build my business for free because a Facebook business page is, mm-hmm. is free. And But you, the, the Facebook business page serves a perf- purpose, and that is to drive traffic to your website. That's the whole goal of having a Facebook business page is to accumulate followers who who want to follow you, who um, 
who are your target market and then directing them to your website or some kind of call to action, whether it's read a blog, um, obviously do business with you <laughs> and things of that nature. So, And I that Facebook that business page thoughts. is good because it has a re that review section. And I think that's crucial because having a reviews page on your website, I think people don't really trust it as much because it's your website and you have kind of control over it. But having a Facebook business page where people are leaving real authentic reviews, um, yeah. That's what people are going to read, like that and Yelp. Yeah, it's so true because usually people have a profile right behind it. So there's a real person behind that review. Mm -hmm. So that's super valid and a super valid point. Absolutely. Yay. So so the second page, are you, are you good with the FAQs? Yeah, or I think we're good. <laughs> okay, okay. So sorry, yeah. Um, you know, so the second page, most important page for estheticians and spot owners is your about page. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there was a question that came up in the group about uh, the about page and what should the contents be and things of that, that nature. And it should just be labeled about, you know, um, the about page is about you. And, and uh, it's what people know to go to, to learn about you. Um, I think it should be written in first person. And the reason for this is our industry is so intimate. You know, it's um, people want to connect with you. And I think you should speak to them. And, yeah. you know, in first person, and, and Brooke agrees with me on that one. So there's four elements that you should have in, in your about page. And, and one is to speak in first person. The second element to that is you want to share your story, you know, share your story. Why did you get into skin to begin with, you know, which really kind of segues into your why, you know, why are you even practicing skin? And, you know, we really want to share that first because that's going to pull on the heartstrings of that potential client or that prospect. And that's going to make them want to connect with you and, and, or it will either they'll connect with you or they won't. And, um, and then the last, the fourth thing that I like to see is, you know, then your credentials at the end, not your yeah. credentials first. People are going to assume that you're qualified, but I feel like they want to know the person that they're going to be working with. That's, that's really the truth. And I just redid my about page. If you want to kind of check out my format, you're more than welcome. Um, but you know, I, I started with my vision. And I think that, you know, you know, what's your purpose? You know, why are you doing skin? Why did you choose skin? Why are you an esthetician and not a dental hygienist? You know, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like people like, and, and it's like, they want to they're like, they, they, so they can resonate with you. And they're like, yeah, um, oh, she struggled with acne too, or, you know, whatever, you know, whatever the case may be. And, and I think that, it just makes you really real. And I know the word authenticity is kind of tossed around, you know, these days in the marketing world, but really, you know, just share your true self, just share your true self and, and be authentic. And I know it's going to feel weird writing in first person and you're probably going to pull up a sheet of paper, you know, a document, and you're going to stare at the blank page for a few minutes going, because it's really hard to write about yourself. And, you know, you can have somebody do it for you. But my, my thoughts on that is that it's not going to be as heartfelt. It's not going to be, um, it's not going to come from you. Now, I'm all for having an editor go and, and take a look at your copy yeah, after but do you agree with that too, Brooke? I mean, do you think that? Totally. I know for me, yeah. like, I am not, I wouldn't consider myself a strong writer. And so sometimes yeah. um, it's like you, in your head, you have the idea and the feel of what you want to say and how you want it to land, mm -hmm. but you can't really come up with the words yourself. And so um, I'm all for have, hiring someone who can come up with that language and make it sound what you originally, how you originally wanted it to sound anyways. So yeah 
So, and, and the thing is, is that if you share your story and you just start writing that, that should come pretty easy mm -hmm. because you know why you got into this beautiful industry, you know? So if you start with that versus, um, I think it'll just be easier to write. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, so here's our challenge to you. Um, as you build out your, you know, about, what was that? That was my dryer stopping. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It just like came through loud and clear in my headset. Um, uh, as you put together your about page and your FAQ pages, let's share them in the group. Okay. And, you know, and here's the other element to that too, on, you know, kind of building your business for free. Um, you um, don't do it. <laughs> like oh, you yeah. have help, you know, you have help. So Brooke here, you know, one of the main reasons why Brooke and I got together is we had minutes before we decided to kind of work together and, you know, and so she has helped dozens of my clients already, dozens of estheticians who have um, had the vision of, what they want to put together and Brooke has helped them corral that and bring it to life. Really? Yeah. And I would say so, the same about you. I remember there was, there was someone, it wasn't this group. It was a different group, but they're like, does anyone have an esthetician coach that they would recommend? And there was like 50 comments and like Maxine was mentioned like literally probably 30 times in, in the comment thread. And I was like, wow. And so I feel like, and I think also a lot of estheticians, they don't even know where to start. You know, it's like they have, yeah. I'm sorry, it keeps on. Okay, go get your laundry. <laughs> um, they, uh, no. they have the talent and they have the wherewithal, but it's just like, sometimes you just need a to-do list, you know, and be like, okay, I can check yeah. this off to this off, this off. And having mm -hmm. someone, you know, a coach telling you, um, okay, this is where we need to start and this is what we need to get done this week and that is so it's so helpful and you're going to avoid a lot of the mistakes that all of us make when starting a business they're inevitable like when you start a business it's inevitable but um at least hopefully they won't be as intense or costly <laughs> when you have someone coaching you through it so yeah yeah and we're happy to um, to give you spa business tips and share content and share ideas in this group. That's what this group is for. We volunteer our time in this group. We both um, we both love it. We're very passionate about raising the bar in the aesthetics industry. But um, you know, and also our services are, are pretty darn affordable. Affordable too. Oh, to yeah. say. <laughs> so you know, between um, between the two of us, um, we can help you. So the, the biggest thing is, is don't be afraid to ask for help. You can't yep. do it alone. We don't want you to do it alone. And um, you have the support in this group, but if you need something further, don't be afraid to reach out because we're here. That's, that's right. right. So we should see if there's more questions here. Let's see, what do we got? I I'm gonna open answers. the dryer real quick or else it's gonna keep on doing that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's see. I was, uh, Danica, she says I was blogging, but somehow I lost motivation. You know what, Danica, it's really easy to lose motivation. And I think that, you know, keeping a running log of the questions that your clients are asking you and having, and getting that inspiration from your clients is really going to propel that. So take that idea and put it into motion and just start keeping a log so that you can record these ideas. Hopefully that helps, okay? I hope that answers your question. And let's see. Um, um, Danica says her about page sucks. Well, let's <laughs> I sent let's her an article. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote, um, okay, so uh, I on my website, brickleywood.com, I wrote like a template that you can use. And it's a very basic template if you want. It's, but um, it's written in first person and it definitely talks about, um, it talks about, you know, kind of the services that you specialize in and why you do it. And it's kind of like a mission statement slash about page put together. But if you don't okay. have anything, 
and you need something really basic, all you need to do is fill in the blanks and use that. Um, and that can be kind of your starting point. So it's better than nothing. Yeah, <laughs> no, for sure. And like, seriously, go check out my about page on Maxine Drake .com yeah. And just, you can, you know, just kind of see how I broke things up. I put images in it um, just to get some ideas. You know what I mean? Cause you could go to, you know, a lot of, well, yeah, check out those two resources and, um, and let us know. Um, Pamela says, and actually getting things done. Yes. Which good thing, Pamela, that you're going to be, she's one of my newest members in the inner circle. So welcome. Mm -hmm. Um, that's my membership. So she'll be on my, um, masterclass next weekend, which is actually on time management, which is Oh, gosh. Yeah. So let's see. Rebecca says, I'm looking for a way to earn money outside of the treatment room and maybe online. Where would I start? You know, I mean, for estheticians, um, you can do consulting online. You can do um, product sales online. Um, Brooke? Um good question so there's and like it's like there's so many ideas bombarding it's almost so yeah you can market yourself as an online consultant there's skype mm -hmm. sessions that you can do with people um you mm -hmm. can i i have a potential client but she's probably going to be a client in the next day or two who's that's what she wants to market herself as is a um an uh, acne specialist. And so she has her own line and, and so, um, product sale, I guess if you have your own line, then product sales, but, um, yep. there you go. And yeah. I so in online consulting a lot, I think estheticians underestimate how much knowledge they actually have. The average person doesn't know anything about ingredients or, or what's good on their face or anything. And so you guys actually have a lot of, a lot of knowledge. I know. I swear you underestimate yourself. There's a lot of us. You underestimate yourself and you don't realize how incredibly smart you are and all of this knowledge that you have in your noggin. And so I want, that's what another reason why I want to see more blogging for that reason as well. Mm -hmm. But um, so hopefully that answers your question, um, Rebecca, on product sales and um, online consulting. I like the Skype sections that actually works as well. So, all right. If there's any final questions, I think, you know, we've been on actually a little bit longer today. It's been a 30 minute broadcast today. And I um, just want to see if anyone has any final questions. Um, Nora, she's at work. Okay. All right. Everyone's wishing happy birthday. Yay. So I think that's it. So we really appreciate you joining us live today. Thank you so much. And um, we'll be here next to, well, not we. <laughs> I'll be here next Tuesday doing a Spa Business Tip Tuesday with a different topic. It'll be a surprise. And we'll see you in the group. Awesome. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Oh, pretty bad.